Happy Homebrew Wednesday. Okay, so this is the last brew of the year. It's going to be another wit beer. Um, just to close the year out, uh, this is my uh, at wit's end. It's a uh, Lee Erdiger Dunkelweissen clone. Um, so uh, I'm looking forward to this one. Um, so let's go through the grain bill on this little baby. So it's just a beer smith recipe I found. It's sort of everything I find for this recipe is this recipe. So um, I'm just keeping it strictly the way it goes. So there's uh, five and a bit over five and a half pound of Pilsner, five and a half pound of a wheat malt, uh, eight. 0.7 or 8.8 grams of chocolate malt. Additions are Halitel, uh, ounce and a half, 90 minute boil. Um, yeast is the German wheat. I've actually gone for the 1096, but I'm going to keep the temperature pretty low, so exclude some of the uh, bananary cloviness. Uh, it won't be because it's not you know traditional for the Dunkel to have that big banananess of like the normal Hefeweizen. And then a dry hop it with uh, East Kent Goldings after three days, or when the specific gravity when it, when it drops to half. Um, so we'll see what the uh, final gravity is, and when it drops half, we will uh, add the dry hops. So we've got a grain, big grain bucket today. Some nice grains there, smelling beautiful already. Um, just about to put it in the tun. Got my boil in the bag. Obviously, that's what I do: boil in the bag. Water's recirculating in there. Coming up to temperature now, just running through the ink bird. Marvelous little voice. You can notice I've got a, a different pump, this this brew. I upgraded, got the uh, Keg King uh, $80 pump, so it's with the um, stainless steel front on the end of it, so and just normal normal hookup that I do for the little one as well. I'll just put a, another gauge in the front, another valve to restrict the flow with the magnetic driven ones it doesn't matter if you restrict the flow it's not going to burn the motor out which is good and yeah got a plate chiller too so we've got to do the diesel 20 plate um, 18 inch I think it is it's a big 18 inch but yeah it looks good so I'm uh, gonna I did a little road test on it um, see how efficient it was it works beautiful I should be able to do it in one pass especially at the moment in Seattle it's uh, freezing and uh, didn't get an inline thermostat I just uh, just got a little bend, a little angle, and uh, drilled a hole in it, and put a very cheap little uh, cooking gauge in it, and that's what I'll be using. It works perfect. So rather than buy the uh, Blickman, I suppose has got one. Um, that saved me a bunch of time, and well, that's out of focus. A bunch of time and uh, a bunch of money, and it seems to work very well. It's very accurate. So. Got my additions ready to go. I've used reverse osmosis water or distilled water again, and I'll put the beer dust in it. Love the additions, it's so easy this way. Um, pH, so I'll be running the, the 5.2 pH. Uh, some yeast nutrients at the end. Got some halitol to start of the boil, and this is from the dry hop, so you won't worry about that. Um, no, no flock tablet or anything like that to clear or gelatin. I'm gonna just I like it cloudy. Um, it's not gonna be really dark. This one, like the other dunkle I did, so um, yeah, I want it a little bit cloudier and a bit lighter brown. All right, I will see you when I mash them. Okay, we are mashed in. Um, so now what we're gonna do is add the uh, 5.2 pH. Uh, it's two teaspoons per five gallons So one and a half Got eight gallons in there by the way actually 8.5 gallons in there um, And that should boil down and give us about six in the fermento, which is uh, where I want it to be so uh, I'm gonna back, the lid back on there And start to pump back up Goes and away we go. Look at all. Okay. And then I'll uh, leave it run for five minutes and then uh, I'll like take a pH reading. Uh, just got a basic little pH gauge, uh, see where it's at. Um, and, and usually it comes in, and then I'm going to 
when I get the pH right I'll add the beer dust um, and this is one pack per five gallons so I've got a pack and uh, actually it's one per five gallons so it's uh, per volume that goes into the fermenter so there's going to be a little bit over five gallons in the fermenter so I'll just add one pack all right cheers mate okay so we mashed for uh, 60 minutes um, and now we've mashed out um, had eight and a half gallons in there um, so it looks like I just did a a, uh, a reading and it looks like we're down to uh, about seven and a half gallons so that's a bit over seven and a half so that should be a good for a 90 minute boil It'll get me down hopefully to where we want um, I took a little bit of pre boil uh, waiting for it to cool to do the test got my uh, ounce and a half of halitol which goes in for 60 minutes full length of the boil and um, and yeah I put them, I just put them in a little bag just a little cleaner's bag so I don't get too much crap in there um, and then uh, I'll probably hit you back after the boil I just turned it on full power now so it shouldn't take long to get to the boil I'll have to get this out and then I'll uh, and then I'll give it a taste let me taste this just uh, to see if it's uh, mm, mm, tastes nice not not too sweet at all actually not sweet at all so Let's me know that there's uh, not a lot of sugar left on that, but definitely no bitter taste at all. It tastes well, wow, really good actually. Um, all right, so I'll hit you back at the boil. I can't wait to uh, try this chiller down. Um, might have performed perfectly. Uh, of course, I knew it would. And um, I'll see uh, probably a first hop edition, or maybe uh, okay, at the end. So the boil's finished. Uh, Ninety minute boil. So now it's time to. Uh, Cool her down, see how she goes. So we'll hook up the dude, the dude of diesel. Just uh, this is the same one I usually run into the top, but I'll just uh, run straight in the chiller. Now, uh, no problem with the boil. Only the one uh, hop addition, so pretty easy. That's what I like to see. So. Um, Plug in the motor. Still works, that's good. And now what we're going to do is uh, slowly get our, uh, our rate going. So I'll bring you over and see if we can... Uh... So the ball's finished. Uh, it went fine check the quantity and I've ended up with a bit over six gallons but the hot bag's still in there so um, that's uh, that's gonna bring the volume down I'll, I'll start to drain that in two secs so we'll crack it open a little bit the valve okay and then start this much a bit slow we'll go slow to start until it comes through and then uh, and then hopefully it's uh, gonna come through okay I'm just gonna turn that around okay so I've restricted the flow of the water um, a lot and I've got the temperature coming back up and now what we'll do is we'll just play with the over the flow until it comes back down to where we want it at so it's coming through pretty quick it's going to take a little bit of time to get it right I suppose very impressive so this has got so cold I'll have to run it hot to um, average it out to where I need it okay perfect okay so let's uh, stop it and then get some more flow okay got the tilt um, got my wort so this way up and it turns itself on I think the light starts to flash when it, it when it uh, it turns itself on and activates and it only activates when it's upright so you store it laying down it's in okay so wait a couple of minutes and I'll turn on the app actually no let's turn on the app now and see what we got tilt Okay, trying to locate, scanning, scanning. 
Oh, there we go. Specific gravity. It'll take a, it takes a while to um, even itself out apparently. So that's uh, pretty close to it. This is a Dunkel Weissen. Um, so pretty close to where it needs to be. Temperature, well the temperature is going to come up. This has been out in the garage for a little while. So um, it's going to be colder than what the actual wort is. The wort uh, just came through. Well actually the first pass through the Duda diesel before I uh, turned the water down. It was coming out at like 45 degrees. That thing is amazing plate chiller and I chilled the whole lot down in there in like five minutes or less. Um, so I can't, I can't uh, can't rave on about that thing long enough, but I'll, we'll save that for another time. Um, yeah, so the temperature's starting to come up now. Pretty cool, very cool. So I'll just cap that off and I'll never need to uh, know when the specific gravity of it is. And this one's gonna be dry hopped um, when, the, uh, when, when, the gra when it's half fermented out. So I won't even, uh, there's no second guessing now, I'll know exactly when it's half fermented from its original gravity. Um, and then I'll add the dry hops. Beautiful. Very nice. Just once again, that's it there. Tilt hydrometer. Tilt hydrometer. Really cool. Very cool. Another little thing, everyone. I've got some good advice off a lot of people, and the one thing that I keep getting off every peep, you know, with these brewers that have been brewing for years and years, unlike me, is one of the most important things is uh, aerating the wort to help with fermentation so I got one of these a little while ago it's just a little stone aeration stone um, and then it goes onto a little bottle I think it cost me you know, God, eight bucks or something like that it lasts for a long time um, so yeah I'll aerate the word every time and uh, I've never had any problem with uh, stuck fermentation it ferments very well so just another little two pieces of advice so it's been in there for uh, nearly 10 minutes, I suppose. Um, and it looks like it's stabilized. So t again, with the trial in the water, it takes 10 minutes probably to um, stabilize. I uh, also took a, a reading with the other thermometer and this is very accurate, it's right on. Uh, specific gravity, I took a specific gravity test and it's uh, right on too. Um, for, well, I couldn't tell. It's not, my um, hydrometer is not that accurate. It's you know hard to tell when it's bobbing around in there. This is, uh, for all intents and purposes, even more accurate. So, and it's holding very steady. It's updating. I suppose that means it's updating every six seconds. Um, so beautifully stable. Um, it, very exciting. Can't wait to uh, can't wait to see how this goes. Um, I'm sure this is like the way of the future. And um, as Rusty um, had a video on a build um, of a fermenting chamber, um, he just had an old iPhone that uh, obviously everyone's got. I've got like five of them or six of them, I think, up in the cupboard. And he just had an old iPhone, put the app on it, and uh, stuck it to the front of the fermenting fridge. And uh, that's probably what I'll do too. So, you know, you just go over and press the button and it tells you exactly what's going on in there. Um, the Duda Diesel, uh, amazing. It was uh, too good. The Seattle water at the moment, um, I have to take a temperature reading of what it's coming through and try and get some system on, depending on what the starting um, temperature of the water is to the outcome of the work that comes through it, because it was, it was barely uh, 50 degrees when it came through it that first time. Um, so I had to actually let it come through about 80 degrees um, by restricting the water flow and then upping the flow of the work until I got got it warmed up a little bit and then uh, you know took the water down then restricted the flow to get it uh, accurately coming through around 70 I wanted it to come out through around 70 I'm gonna you know this is a uh, heavy voice and I'm gonna run it pretty high um, so um, <laughs> so pretty blown away by it and all that whole screwing around and all that probably would have taken me five minutes to do it but it took me about 10 because I ran out to the um, the host brick and turn it off and on a couple of times so um, yeah if you were looking at getting in one this I think this cost me $80 or maybe $100 or something um, considering the well, I got a silver serpent up there and then I got another one um, it would take 45 minutes and uh, 
and then I just back flush the water through this one though and it cleaned it out straight away with the with the pump um, because I you know put water in there to clean the kettle out as well after I rinse it um, really no drama at all okay keep brewing okay here we are back with the uh, Dunkel Weeson uh, we'll do a tasting and uh, a bit of a review on how it turned out it's been uh, it's been in the keg for two weeks beautiful um, great head on it, the um, adjustments to the recipe for the head obviously worked. It's a really thick, beautiful, like, great head, great head. Okay, so I had a few changes on this recipe from the original dunk all I did. Um, namely, I changed from the caramel um, uh, crystal to I went with uh, chocolate, uh, chocolate malt. Um, and then uh, bittering hops were um, were halitel, same sort of pretty basic uh, for uh, wheat beer, um, but then I dry hopped with East Kent Goldings um, when it was half fermented out in the, in the fermenter, and the uh, tilt um, helped greatly with that. I didn't, there was no guesswork; um, it was just I knew exactly when to put it in, um, and then uh, it finished a little bit lower on the um, gravity. Um, that I like, but it actually fermented down a little bit harder than the other one. So I come down two points. I uh, fermented it, uh, finished out at uh, 102, 1, 1.012, um, but it started just on uh, 10.50. Um, so smell-wise, um, it's like definitely got a more of a chocolatey, malty um, um, smell from the, the, the grains rather than the other one I had a little bit of a burnt or a smell um, and the other one I think I uh, fermented a little bit higher it had more of that banana-y clove um, smell. This one has got more of a, um, a, a sweeter biscuity um, still a little bit of a backbone of that sickly banana-y smell um, uh, but uh, definitely a little, a little bit better smell I think um, as well so let's dive in let's give it a go Gotta have a big glass. <clears throat> so immediately what I'm getting is um, a great true Dunkel flavor. Not high on the banana, not high on the clovey spice, but it's definitely got that um, that backbone to the yeast. Um, it's got a real like creamy, biscuity um, flavor to it. No bitterness at all, hardly any bitterness, except for the um, maybe a bit of the chocolate malt which is, you know, really low on the bitter scale. Great mouthfeel, um, like not really thick, but you, you know, you can definitely feel it's a dark in your mouth. It's, um, these Dunkel Wheats are like a real mind, a mind freak because you you look at the dark co color and I think, holy crap, it's gonna be a porter or a stout or, you know, a dark ale. And it, it just comes across so smooth. This one is, this one is really smooth. It's, uh, it's got to be my favorite one so far. The, the, the minor adjustments on, on the recipe um, are, are really great. I think uh, the yeast is perfect. I'll use that yeast, but um, uh, fermented a little bit yeah, lower in temperature. I think that's better. If, you know, the, the big banana clove isn't true to the dunkel anyway, like a normal hef. Um, but this is definitely going in yearly rotation. It is so easy to drink. And about 5%, um, it'll, it'll give you a nudge, but not too too much of a nudge. The carrot, the carrot pill, there's actually carrot pill in this one. With the, work, the original one wasn't. Um, and, and it carries a head. It's, uh, it's only carbonated on 10%, but it carries a head beautifully. It's, uh, it, it just keeps reforming the head as you, as you spill it back down from your mouth, um, if there's any left. Um, so definitely, uh, I think a win-win, and this will just go into uh, some beer mail, and I'll, I'll mail a bunch of it out to the people who tried the original one, and get their opinions on it. But for my style, uh, this this recipe is definitely definitely a winner. Um, hope you enjoyed this one. I've got a bunch more coming this year. You saw the new toys with the tilt and the do the diesel. I got a um, another one coming out soon, and I'll teach you how to use the do the diesel. Um, plate chiller uh, with the ink bird to do a whirlpool at 180, bring it down with the 
using the motor and the, the and, and an eat bird with the due to diesel and then resting in a 180 and um, uh, for a 20 minute whirlpool with a hop stand. Uh, enjoy because I know I'm gonna. Hey.